Radar interferometry is one of the truly remarkable things that you can do with a radar system. Interferometry relies on the fact that the radar systems are able to measure the phase of the wave. And the phase is the point in the wave's cycle. So we are able to determine whether the wave is on its way up towards a peak, if it's on its way down towards a trough, or whether it's back up towards a peak again. And we measure that over the cycle of the wave. So if you're measuring in degrees, you would call that from 0 to 360 degrees is a full cycle of the wave. In units of radians, it's 0 to 2 pi. Now, by measuring the phase of the signals coming back, this allows us to make a comparison between the phases arriving at two different systems. If we have two different radar systems, uh, we call this a bistatic mode. So a monostatic mode is when the antenna that's transmitting the wave is the same antenna that's receiving it. So it's in the same, exactly the same location. A bistatic mode is when you have two separate sensors. Now in something like the shuttled radar topography mission, those two sensors were separated on the one platform by a boom uh, between the two antennas. On the Tandem X mission, it was two entirely separate satellites that were flying along in tandem to each other. Another way you can do the same setup is to have the same antenna in orbit around the Earth. It comes to a similar orbit, but slightly displaced. Unlike stereo photography, we're talking about very, very small distances here compared to the altitude. So you might be flying at many hundreds of kilometers, up to you know, 600, 800 kilometers. And you might only be talking about tens or hundreds or maybe a few kilometers uh, in separation between these two systems. So it's only uh, tens, hundreds of meters to a few kilometers in separation. But it's that separation that actually determines the uh, a small difference in the echo coming back from the Earth's surface. And we can liken it to how we do interferometry, essentially, with our ears. So our ears actually measure a phase difference at low frequency sound waves. And the reason for that is because our ears are not very good at determining direction. So by using two ears together and measuring the phase difference of the signal arriving at one ear and the other ear, we can tell roughly which direction it's coming. So a signal that's come off to my right, for example, as it comes in, it will arrive at my right ear slightly earlier than it arrives at my left ear. And that extra distance that it travels means that it has an extra little part of the cycle of the wave. And our ears are able to detect that phase difference and know that the signal in my left ear has traveled slightly longer and therefore the sound wave, sound wave must be coming towards my right. We do exactly the same thing in a radar system, except it's not two ears, it's two antennas sometimes on the same platform, sometimes on separate platforms, or sometimes on a repeat pass. But those two systems are measuring the phase difference of the echoes coming back in order to resolve the ambiguity in direction. Now, whereas our eyes are really good at measuring direction and not very good at measuring range, our ears are much better at doing time-based measurements and not very good at direction. So what we do with our eyes is that we use two eyes together to produce a stereo image, and that stereo image allows us to resolve the ambiguity of distance. So each eye does angles very well, and we can measure the parallax difference between each eye. And from that, we can determine how far away an object is. And in the same way in optical remote sensing, if we use two optical sensors and do stereo imagery, we can measure the parallax difference between the two images and then resolve the ambiguity of range or distance. With a radar system, we're really good at measuring distance because we do our timing extremely accurately, but we're really bad at measuring direction. So if we take two radar systems, either on the same platform, separate platforms, and we measure the phase difference of the signals coming back, we can actually get some directional information. And if we have the range information and the direction, we essentially have the polar coordinates that allows us to locate the echo in its proper location on the ground surface. One of the things that we have to consider, though, is that we are, if we're measuring two different signals, 
So both of these antennas can be measuring an entirely separate image. And what we do is look at the phase difference between these two images. There are many things, though, in terms of the movement of vegetation or the movement of water surfaces that might actually interfere with the phase of the signal coming back. So the phase of the echoes coming back might not always be as consistent as you need them to be to make the phase difference meaningful. We use the term coherence or interferometric coherence to describe the, the similarity of those two waves. So if we have a, a wave at antenna one and a wave at antenna two that we're building an image, so image one and image two, the similarity of the waves in terms of amplitude and phase give us a measure of what we call coherence. And that gives us some uh, measure of the quality of the phase difference that we're measuring between those two systems. If the magnitude of the coherence is very low, we become less confident that the phase measurement is very accurate. If the coherence magnitude is very high, and so that's on a scale of zero to one, so if the coherence magnitude gets close to one, we become very confident that actually the phase difference that we're measuring is a, is a proper representation of the phase difference due to the slightly different locations of each antenna. The coherence, or the interferometric coherence, is therefore also some indication of the land cover type. And it's possible to use the coherence magnitude as some indicator of uh, things like vegetation cover. If you're doing repeat pass interferometry, where you come back at some time later, so you do one pass with one antenna, and then you come back at a later time, if the ground surface has, has moved in a random way, like trees blowing in the wind, then the signal that we're trying to measure and the phase of that signal gets disrupted quite considerably. It's one of the reasons why it's quite difficult to do interferometry over vegetated areas. So unless you have both of the antennas present at the same time, very often you get very low coherence or very low interfer interferometric coherence over vegetated surfaces and you can't do interferometry.